the dogs in association with the British Greyhound Racing Board. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas day on this special festive edition of the Dogs. We'll be rounding up a magnificent season. Of course, including the Blue Square Derby final at Wimbledon. We look back at the superstars on the track in 2008. And we pinpoint some of the best newcomers in our sport. The year on Sky Sports started not as normal with the Juvenile Championship, but at a wet and windswept Hall Green, where Tufty's Paletta defeated Hot Pot Director's Chair in a thrilling Bet Direct Prestige. Tufty's Paletta by a nose! Nine days later, and just a few miles north, Sky viewers were treated to an exhibition display by the dog that was to become one of the Derby favourites, Ballymac Under. And away they go, and well away is Ballymac Under. He's going to streak up towards the first bend and gets round in front by a good length and a half. Right signal moves off, hampers up trap three. Lively Arthur, Arthur, he's come for Cleaners Lady as they head down the far side. It's Ballymac Under by a good five lengths over right signal in second place. Then a good three lengths back to six. Follow Nile. They come round the final bend, and it's Ballymac Under who's going to make it eight out of eight. What a sensational run from Ballymac Under. Young Matt Dartnell, in his first full year as trainer in his own right, had a serious classic contender on his hands as he attempted to achieve something his father Terry never did, a derby success. And Ballymac under consolidated his position in the Blue Square derby betting with an emphatic success in the Juvenile Championship, staged at Wimbledon in early February. The hair spinning round, favoured in three, Ballymac under for the Racing Post Juvenile Championship. Away they go, he's walked out of the boxes, and so is opening artist. It's Farlo Reason blazing the trail then, up towards the first bend. Two tries to get inside there, Farlo Hurricane, there's Bother. In behind him comes Ballymac under. It's been scrappy, but Ballymac under comes to join Farlo Reason on the outside. On the inside is Farlo Hurricane, hitting the front there is Ballymac under. Off that slow start, he's gone round in front two. Farlo Hurricane up in the second, they can fire Farlo Reason as they come up towards winner line. It's Ballymac under. It's another win for Ballymac under. Dartnell then sent out Ardmail Champ to win the Middle and Puppy Derby at Monmore and also unveiled Ballymac Russo, under's brother, who went faster than his sibling in front of our cameras at Wimbledon in April. After such a promising start to the year, injuries sidelined both Ballymac Russo and Ardmail Champ before the Derby and Ballymac under didn't quite fulfil his promise in the Classic. But these dogs are still young with few miles on the clock and have to be feared in 2009. Sam Poots' Barnfield on Air was the other Windsor favourite for the Derby after a sensational 2007 campaign. The ambitious plan for the year was the three derbies and Barnfield on Air went to Shawfield in good form but short of work after a couple of niggling injuries. His first round defeat was blamed on the worst going of the year at any track after a downpour flooded the recently scarified surface. The meeting was abandoned after just three of the first round heats. Defeat in the second round and elimination in the semi-final behind the new Irish star Tyra Kieran dented Barnfield on Air's reputation, which he would have to rebuild quickly before the start of the Blue Square derby. Tyra Kieran went on to land the Ibet X Scottish derby. It was a high-class field, including his compatriot Loyal Honcho and Ted Soppett's rising star, the recently syndicated Bubbly Totty. Shawfield was packed to the rafters for their biggest night of the year. Your Hunter are not too well away. Bubbly Totty broke well. Tyra Kieran even quicker. And Tyra Kieran goes round in front and leads here by four lengths. Bubbly Totty's turn second. After these comes five Loyal Honcho, then a break back to two. Can't grow top. It's Tyra Kieran with a four length lead over six Bubbly Totty as they round the final bend. And it's still Tyra Kieran who holds the track record. And he's five lengths. An Irish classic success always sparks massive celebration 
and the lure of a £1 million bonus for winning all three derbies would mean that Paul Hennessy would bring a strong team back over the water to contest the Wimbledon Classic. The Irish also dominated the Blue Square English derby and come final night after Barnfield on air had bowed out bravely in the semi-finals, the stage was set for Tyra Kieran to land derby number two, or was it? Three Irish trained dogs dominated the betting market with Hennessy's Tyra Laurel and Tyra Kieran challenged for supremacy by the now two-time Blue Square derby finalist Loyal Honcho. Few would begrudge victory for this dog or in particular his trainer Seamus Graham who had suffered more than most over the years in his quest for English derby glory. Charlie Lister's kryptonite headed the home challenge but had the dreaded red jacket to contend with. Errol Blythe provides a commentary. We're set and ready for the 2008 running of the Blue Square Greyhound Derby Final. John Foster will come towards the front of the traps and check that everything is OK. One by one, he checks them over. We've got joint favourites at the moment, Laurel Honcho and Tara Laurel. Tara Kieran at 11-4. The hair is in motion for the Blue Square Greyhound Derby Final of 2008. The roar's gone up. Here comes the hair. Just a little matter of £100,000 at stake. And there they go, and racing up towards the first bend, and Loyal Honcho's first to show up from Tyra Kieran. Then comes Kryptonite. Loyal Honcho goes around the bend in front. There's trouble for Tyra Laurel, and also traps his blonde. was slowest to go into the bend. You can see Tyra Laurel moves off and hampers Blondino. There's trouble there. Lenton Express clipped the back paws there of Trap 1 Kryptonite, but it was to be Loyal Honcho and Seamus Graham with Noel Ryan, the owner, of course, landing the spoils, and it's another one for the Irish this year's Greyhound Derby. Loyal Honcho all about speed. He knew what to expect from the crowd. He came away much better this year than he did last year. And he's proven to be a worthy champion. Never in doubt after his first bend advantage, Loyal Honcho goes one better than 2007. And Seamus Graham finally tastes English derby success some 25 years after his first attempt. Trailing in last off the field after being knocked over at the second bend was the Tony Collett-trained Lenton Express. Collett enjoyed plenty of success this year, thanks mainly to Greyhounds, owned by Lenny Ponder and his syndicate. Lenton Express went on to win the second richest race on the calendar, the William Hill Classic at Sunderland. Away they go, racing it towards the first bend, Me Buddy out, fairly straight up with a pace though, Bauer Keen is going to lead up towards the first bend, it's Bauer Keen, let's get round in front, should be she, he was badly hampered, but still in second half, these comes one on the inside, Lenson Express, it's trapped for Bauer Keen, the local hope for Kelly Macari leading, but Lenson Express comes shooting up into second place, and there comes two, Droopy Sheehy, they come round the final bend, Bauer Keen, now all out as Lenson Express is piling on the pressure on the inside, it's Lenson Express winning! Lenton Express winning the Classic easily. Collett in the trio plundered the other major prize on the card, the £20,000 William Hill Grand Prix, with their established stayer Lenton Joker, already the winner of the Cesarowicz at Oxford. And away they go, racing it towards the first bend of four, Romeo Turbo out fast then from two, Lenton Joker on its inside as they go around the turn, Lenton Joker's brave and strong and pushes Romeo Turbo, uh, but Romeo Turbo's not quite done with at the moment, after these comes one blonde buzz as they come past the stands and Lenton Joker has now hit the front, Romeo Turbo and blonde buzz back in second and third, after these comes three, Kulavani Pius, I can tell you uh, Bubbly Totty's making up a little bit of ground on the inside of that runner and towards the rear is Westmead Tina but it's Lenson Joker, fresh after that Cesarowicz winner, is going to post up another big win here. It's Lenson Joker, a real king of the stayers at the moment.
over 25 grand already in the bank for the Joker. There was another big payday on the cards when he lined up as the red hot 4 to 11 favourite to win the Coral Champion Stakes. Letting go, Rick Skittles, the first bend in director's chair, has bombed out of the boxes. Barfield on air goes, then comes Lenson Joker, that comes thundering through. And Lenson Joker has hit the front already around the second bend, ahead of director's chair. Off these comes one bubbly Sally, then off these comes three. That's a load star. Barfield on air has gone wrong, unfortunately, at the back as they head down the far side. And it's Lenson Joker powering away. Some four lengths clear from director's chair. This is a true champion over six bends. And Lenson Joker, some five lengths clear from director's chair in second. Coming up the home straight, it's all about the Joker. Lenson Joker then eyed the William Hill St. Ledger at Wimbledon in October, but went lame in the semi finals. This left the door open for his main rival, Bubbly Totty, who lined up in the £13,000 final as the second shortest price favourite in the 80 year history of the Stayers Classic. There they go, Rick Skittles towards a first bet. Fast start from midway, Skipper. Bounced out, early pace, lets an Earl. There's trouble on the inside, and Bubbly Totty leads at the first bend. And there was a huge roar from the Champagne Syndicate as the Totty took over. It's Bubbly Totty by four and a half lengths here from midway, Skipper in second. Off these comes one, lets an Earl. As they go out onto their final circuit, there comes two big hits, go big hitter. They head down the far side. It's Bubbly Totty by seven lengths here from midway, Skipper. Off these, there's a three Gap back to Lenton Earl, but Bubbly Totty with a four and a half length lead of a midway skipper who's staying on stoutly up the home straight they go. Bubbly Totty by three lengths will win this year's St. Ledger and beats midway skipper in second place. Nearly 100 members of the Champagne Club syndicate invaded the track at Wimbledon celebrating their success. They hoped for even more when their superstar contested the final of the Essex Vars at Romford. They head down the far side and going further away, Brickfield Dream's got a two-length lead then from Bomber Blue in second. Six Bubbly Totty struggling to raise his game, then can five to his Carvalho. They come round the final bend, it's Brickfield Dream. Brickfield Dream, here comes Bubbly Totty and Dupis Carvalho! Oh my word, my word, my word, it's gone to a photo. Brickfield Dream winning the Essex Vars. So for Totty, who was found to be lame after the race, it could be that Ernie Gaskin's outsider has shattered his connection's dreams of Greyhound of the Year success. Coming up after the break, we review the year of the pups, sprinters, hurdlers and marathon stars. Welcome back to the Dogs Review of 2008. This year we said goodbye to the 2007 Greyhound of the Year, Spirit and Louis. A few wins in one-off races, interrupted by niggling injuries, meant that although the promise of his former greatness was still there, he never quite managed to deliver. Spirit and Louis' Durando Marathon win of last year was one of his best performances, and he tried for a repeat, but was no match for Darrell Porter's Swift Jade and did not race again. But as they head down the far side, it's Swift Blackfoot still with the lead here. By three and a half lengths, Bubbly Kate has moved up in a second. Trap four, Swift Jade is now bearing down upon Swift uh, Blackfoot. And as they come around the second last bend, Swift Jade hits the front from Swift Blackfoot. Off these comes Bubbly Kate, and then comes Spirit on Louis. But it's Swift Jade, she's out in front, she confirms the form, she wins the Durando Marathon. Missing from the Durando was the new kid on the marathon block, flying winner. She'd earlier won the Regency, beating Swift Jade in one of the most exciting races of the year. There they go, and flying winners popped out in front, but being pushed and barged around here by trap one, Bally Makwishi, who nips around in front. Bally Makwishi now goes on from four. Sherry's boy trying to move up in a second. Flying winner loses its pitch. Swift Jade at the back, as expected. It's Bally Makwishi with a lead here, four. Forced to check, Sherry's boy. After he's got three lengths back to five, glittering Aries. They head down the far side. Bally Makwishi by two lengths at the moment from Sherry's boy. Three lengths back to five, glittering Aries. They come around his second last bend, trying to pick up again his fly. Winner, it's got inside track five. Good young Aries, they come around the final bend. Bally Macwishi by a length and a half. Watch out for flying winner. It's absolutely hurting home with Swift Jade as well. It's going to be one inside. Just flying winner, flying winner from out of the clouds has won the Coral Regency final. Trained by Chris Lund, flying winner missed the Durando to save her for a tilt at the TV trophy held for the first time at Doncaster. And away they go, racing up towards the first bend. 
Flying winners away well, five Swift Blackfoot's going to try and lead with Swift Ninja, and it's Ninja that goes round in front then. Six Swift Ninja setting the pace here by three and a half lengths over five. Swift Blackfoot in second, then two and a half lengths back to one. Flying winner, there comes two midway skipper. Uh, towards the back are Bubbly Kate and also Swift Jade right at the back of these six runners. They're around the fourth bend. Swift Ninja being taken on by Swift Blackfoot for the lead. Edging closer all the time is Flying Winner. Two and a half lengths then back to uh, racing in fourth midway skipper. Flying Winner's having to come off the rails to go past Ninja. It's Blackfoot, 33 to one shot. Swift Blackfoot in front here. But the roar's gone up for Flying Winner. The crowd though, you know, everyone knows that Flying Winner's just hit the front at the second last bend and gone really clear here from a classy field. It's Flying Winner going to win this so easily in the end by a good eight, ten lengths, increasing the lead all the time. Track records in both heat and final for Flying Winner cemented her place at the top of the marathon division. Now to the other extreme, distance-wise, as we look at the top sprinters of the year. Last year's scurry winner, Horseshoe Ping, began and ended this year in style but he was unable to defend his sprinter's crown as Boa Brother Mac took the coveted title of Scurry Gold Cup winner at Perry Bar in June. There they go, well away Blonde Jet, pacing up well also Boa Brother Mac, in between them Swift Sapphire, then comes one Beardy's Lobby, they go round the bend and it's Blonde Jet, Boa Brother Mac, and now here comes Horseshoe Ping, it's Blonde Jet, Boa Brother Mac forces the issue to go on, Boa Brother Mac wins going away from Blonde Jet just in second ahead of Horseshoe Ping. Harry Williams' Boa Brother Mac won 20 of his 30 races this year. Matt Dartnell's Me Buddy performed admirably over the shorter four bend trip, landing the guys and dolls at Crayford and the Fengate Collar at Peterborough, the track where it had all started for him in the final of the John Smith's Peterborough Puppy Derby. And they're off from racing out towards the first bend. Glen Grove Ginger is out fast. Me Buddy's heading towards the rails. Wants to be knocked over. Connor Roger. There's more trouble on the back there. Six. Troopies Marcus in the wars as they head down the far side. It's Me Buddy for Matt Dartnell leading here and leading by three and a half lengths over. He's a mystery up in the second. There comes five. Glen Road Ginger. It hasn't been pretty, but it's Me Buddy who's out in front here by a good three lengths up towards wind line. Me Buddy staying on late drive on captain, trying to make a race of it. Staying on also for third was Glen. Row Ginger. Over hurdles now with the 2007 Hurdler of the Year, Kildare Lark. Jason Foster's charge notched up a much better strike rate this year with 18 wins from 29 races, including the jewel in the crown for timber toppers, the Stan James Grand National. And they're racing, Kildare Lark got away pretty well as they clear the first flight, smooth turbo didn't, they go over the second, moving up Morel Warrior on the inside is Beal, very wide eye on the flame, has got a prominent pitch as they drive down the back in the pouring rain, they come to the next Morel Warrior, a small lead then from Kildare Lark, and then on the outside eye on the flame, smooth turbo is further back in the field as they bunch towards home, Kildare Lark still with a small advantage, Morel Warrior pressing, eye on the flame, the outside, up to the line, Kildare Kildare Lark has won the national. Kildare Lark is now enjoying retirement on his owner's sofa. So who can we expect to take up his mantle? Hot Dog Jack was this year's Springbok champion and seemed to have the jumping world at his feet, but succumbed to various training setbacks. Although still lined up as odds on favorite on the champion hurdle at Wimbledon on Derby final night. Away they go, racing up towards the first bit. Hot Dog Jack has messed it up at the start and five. Morel Warriors first to show here. He's going to go round in front. Just with up three. Winky Stop on this inside now. Winky Stop leads from five. Morel Warrior after these comes four. Nevada Blue and then comes six. That's Beardy's Harry One. Bubbly Magic and nowhere to be seen. Hot Dog Jack, a disappointing race at the back. They come round the final bend and it's Morel Warrior out in front here by half a length from Nevada Blue. After these comes one. Bubbly Magic, they're over the last and it's going to be trapped by. Morel Warrior is currently on the comeback trail after injury, so perhaps the 2009 crop of hurdlers will have it all to play for. This year's crop of puppies have been truly outstanding. In the summer, Fear Zephonic beat the classy Litter Brothers, Westmead Osprey and Diver, and then reappeared in September to give the Bellevue track record a real shake. Jester Snap won the Stan James Puppy Derby at Wimbledon for trainer Jim Daly fulfilling a lifetime dream of a big race success for the former Racing Post journalist. 
He was then involved in the Manchester Puppy Cup behind the Dean Charles trained Dean Ridge Fury. Throw Fear Zephonic, Follow Merlin and Crown Rover into the mix and you had a cracker of a final. And there they go, racing up towards the first bend of five. Crown Rover away well. Here comes six London Water. And on the inside of that is Dean Ridge Fury. And that's going to take up the lead. After it comes Fear Zephonic now moving swiftly up into second. There was trouble for Jester's nap. Not a great start. That's towards the rear as they head down the far side. Dean Ridge Fury holding one. Fear Zephonic at bay at the moment. They go around the third bend. And Fear Zephonic seems to check at that point. And this leads means that Dean Ridge Fury's quickened on now. Gone three lengths clear. Dean Ridge Fury will win. Staying on for second was Farlow Merlin. Pound for pound, that was probably the best puppy race of the year. Over four bends, three greyhounds have already proved serious classic contenders for 2009. Verna Best, Wise Thought and Ninja Jamie. Ninja Jamie's strike rate is not as impressive as the other two, mainly due to his inconsistency at the traps. However, he's strong over four bends, and when he does manage to hit the lids, like in the final of the Betfair East Anglian Derby, he's the real deal. Here comes the hair. There they go, racing up towards the first bend. Ninja Jamie broke well, showing pace up also his three move along blue, but it's Ninja Jamie that's going to go round in front. And Ninja Jamie suddenly darts clear by Thrillings here from move along blue in second half. These comes four Cobra striking, six Troopies Carvalho back in fourth as they go into the teeth of the gale on that third turn. They come round the final bend and two Ninja Jamie has quickened away now. It's a ninth success in the East Anglia. For Charlie Lister and Ninja Jamie has won by a street. And he broke the track record in the process. Martin White's wise thought has not only won 11 of his 13 races in England, but also progressed to the semi-finals of the Irish Derby. His finest moment on these shores, however, came in the Betfred Eclipse at Nottingham in October. And there they go, racing up towards the first bend, and way fast is trap four, move along blue, heading towards the rails, Born Foon Mao alongside, here comes White's Thought, he's got past Romeo Maldini with no problems whatsoever, and White's Thought hits the front, now we should see some pace from this Greyhound as they head down the far side, White's Thought in front, four, move along blue just in second, here comes two, Born Foon Malagao to take second half, these comes a one on the inside, judicial force, but it's White's Thought who's away and gone, leading up the home straight here by two and a half lengths, up the winning line, it's White's Thought, staying on late, Romeo Maldini took second. Wise Thought is now anti-post favourite for the Blue Square Derby. And finally, Baherna Best. Barry Draper's dog won three high-profile competitions in his first season. First up, the Labrooks Midland Gold Cup, en route to one of the oldest Four Ben classics, the Betfred Laurels at Bellevue. He capped a fine year when travelling to Newcastle to land the William Hill All England Cup. Here comes the hair, William Hill All England Cup. He's got it right tonight though. Verna Best is out fast, pacing up well. Dotland Hitman though comes to challenge up to the first bend. We've got a race on the hands here. There's half length between them. Harding down the far side. Iron the Brave lies in third half. These come six. Then comes Troopies Carvalho and five. Iron the Pulse. But as they come into the third bend, Verna Best is going to have to pull out all the stops because Dotland Hitman is not going to give up the ghost too easily. Five's gone lame at the back as they come around the final. Ben. It's two for her and the best. Dotland Hitman's trying to close all the time. It's for her and the best by half a length. He wins the All England Cup. Baherna Best looks an outstanding prospect for 2009, but of the big three, Wise Thought is considered by Derby sponsors Blue Square to be the most likely to land the ultimate prize in May. For details of when your local track is racing over the festive period, check out our website, thedogs.co.uk. Next week, we hear from champion trainer Mark Wallace, and we predict the greyhounds that will make it big in 2009. The Dogs, in association with the British Greyhound Racing Board.